Hey everybody. Um, so uh, if you um, you know if you watch my channel, you probably know that I'm a big fan of uh, using um, different kinds of molds to uh, to make things. Like I have uh, I have massive ones. You know, I have gigantic ones in case I want to do like an eight by eight uh, tile of um, like flagstones. You know, up up. Don't you want to be in the video? No? Okay. Um, I have like little molds that I made, you know, for like doing like resin uh, crystals and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I, uh, I use molds all the time. But this is the first time that I've actually bought any molds uh, for, uh, for my table. Um, I got uh, a couple of. Um, her starts molds. I um, can't remember the numbers. I think it's 44 and 45. The uh, Gothic uh, Cathedral mold and the um, ooh, this one. I forget what this one's called. But uh, this one has like complete. Uh, it has the pieces to make like columns and um, it, it, you know it has like some some wall sections and this one has um, sort of gothic uh, arches and things like that. Um, and then I also got um, some some other ones. Um, these are, uh, they're from a, uh, a UK company. Um, they're, they're like brick sections um, and uh, just little wall sections and they have the, the, the teeth in them so that they can key together. And uh, you can make uh, wall sections out of them. So um, this is not going to be a video about how to get like perfect um, casts out of your, uh, your molds for your table. Um, it's not the look I'm going for. I'm going for more of a ruined look um so uh a few things um that i would really recommend if you're going to do a project like this and you want to use like the hearst arts molds or if you want to use these guys to make like wall sections um i would really really recommend getting a self-healing cutting mat uh with uh with an inch system on it uh, or you know if you're using millimeters whatever um, the uh, um, <clears throat> the one that I use is a is a Fiskars cutting mat it's actually designed for it's meant for for sewing um, it's a you know it's a it's for for sewing <laughs> um, and then I and then I use a good t-square I always use a I constantly use this T square that I have that's it's a, a steel T square and it will last forever. Like they're gonna find it in my studio when I'm dead and like somebody's gonna get it. Um, but um, the cool thing about the Hearst Arts molds is that everything is on a, a one inch combinatorix kind of system. Uh, and what I mean by that is that everything is like a one inch wide or a half inch or a quarter inch, you know, tall or whatever. So when you glue things together, it's very much like Legos. It feels very, very much like Legos. Like I was really reminded of when I was a kid and I would be playing with Legos and I was like, Oh, I need more of like that one piece. Like I just need that one little piece to, to complete this thing. And um, I could just uh, pour more of them. <laughs> so, so that's, you know, that's awesome. Um, I use, um, I've been using a few different types of glue uh, to, uh, to glue things together. Um, I was using, um, Super glue. Uh, I was I, I personally I really like the gorilla um, 
medium, like the, they make like a gel super glue that's kind of like a medium body, like it just, it stays in one place and then when you squish the pieces together, it doesn't run all over the place. Uh, and then it has a little self-clearing uh, cap so that when you put the cap in it, it pushes the, uh, it, it, you know, removes any blockage in there. Uh, and then I was also using um, E6000 glue. Um, E6000 is a really, really ridiculously strong glue. It, um, it's the type of glue that a jeweler would use to put a gem in a setting, like on a ring or a necklace or something like that. And it's like waterproof and I don't really know of a stronger glue. Um, so if there was any gaps in between the pieces, then I would, I would use um, E6000 just because it's, it's ridiculously strong. And, uh, and then also I was using uh, PVA glue. Um, the, the glue that um, Bruce recommends, that uh, uh, Bruce Hurst, the, um, the guy who makes um, uh, Hurst Arts molds, he recommends Eileen's Tacky Glue. And um, Eileen's Tacky Glue is just a really, really strong PVA glue. Think like Elmer's glue, but way stronger. Um, so, uh, and then um, the, I had kind of a breakthrough when I was when I was doing casting. So, um, you know, I used to tell people to go to Hobby Lobby and like buy their um, like their silicone and their uh, their like casting plaster and stuff like that because. There, it used to be like super, super cheap to go there. Um, they um, they recently just did away with the 40% the off coupon. Like you used to be able to go there and use a 40% off coupon every time you went. And like I'd heard stories of people where they worked next to one, like next to a Hobby Lobby, and then they would go in and buy one tube of Vallejo paint, you know, because they carry Vallejo model color. They would just get one tube every single time that they went. And like eventually they had the whole line for half off. Um, but um, the, so what I'm, what, I, what I'm telling people to do now is if you have a Reynolds Advanced Materials near you, go check it out. They're amazing. Like um, they have every kind of smooth on product that I've ever heard of. Uh, they had these smooth on products that I was playing with, um, and I'll, I'll circle back to that. But the, they have 50 pound bags of, of HydroCal plaster for $25, which is like, that's the cheapest. I've, I mean, HydroCal plaster has, it has a compressive force of like thousands of pounds, you know? So it's just ridiculously strong. And, um, and then, um, I, uh, I bought, um, let's see, yeah, I bought a 50 pound bag of, of HydroCal plaster. And then I tried this other thing. There's this system that's a smooth on system. It's called Duo Matrix Neo. And uh, Duo Matrix Neo is a, it's like a, a gypsum pl plaster casting system. Uh, it's um, what it is is it's there's a like an acrylic fortifier, a polymer that they that they add to um, gypsum casting plaster, and it makes it ridiculously strong. And it kind of like clings to the um, it's sort of sticky, so it like cl clings to the molds and like gets really good detail and stuff like that. So, uh, so what I what I did was I was mixing. I, I I tried it. It's expensive, so I bought the industrial version, which is uh, Sika um, concrete additive. So it's just a concrete fortifier, and it's it's really cheap. Um, and then you you add it to concrete instead of water. So I was using that, and then I was adding some. Um, <clears throat> I was adding um, uh, 
uh, pigments to it, like uh, like graphite or um, just some artist pigments because um, they're non-reactive. So I know that they aren't going to react with um, with the plaster or the uh, the concrete additive stuff. It's just going to kind of add some color to the pieces so that um, I mean, they actually have a really nice look on their own when they come out, you know, when they're done being cast. Uh, they look like real brick or stone. Um, you just need to kind of weather them, you know, do some, do some, a little bit of coloring on them or do whatever. Um, but if, if, heaven forbid, like somebody drops them or something, then they take a chunk out of it, if they get chipped, um, it just looks like there's a chunk missing out of it instead of a, you know, bright and white hydrocal uh, cast. So, you know, that was, those were two things that I was doing, um, was, uh, was adding the, um, the Sika mix stuff, and then also adding some pigments to the plaster. And, um, uh, I also, I even, on these guys, on these, uh, uh, brick mold guys, I even did this thing where I kind of like sprinkled a little bit of very fine grit sand in them to get that kind of brick uh, texture in there. And um, I don't hate it, don't hate the look. In fact, like I've, I've been doing, been playing with it and my technique hasn't changed. Like that was the first thing that I tried when I caught them. Um, and um, also, um, <clears throat> When I'm, when I'm mixing this stuff, what I do is I just, I, I put in some, uh, some of the Sika concrete stuff, and then I just add hydrocal to it until you get that kind of um, milkshake consistency, not, sorry, not milkshake, melt, melted milkshake. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, like, for you guys in the UK or Australia or whatever, go to a McDonald's, buy a milkshake, let it melt. <laughs> and like, you want like melted ice cream, melted, um, but like the cheap stuff like McDonald's. <laughs> it's, the, it's the only like analogy that I can think of of like the perfect, um, like consistency is melted milkshake. Um, that's like the perfect, uh, like consistency that you want of your, of your plaster when you're pouring it. And, um, so, and then also what I did was I was sprinkling on my molds. I was sprinkling some plaster that I had mixed with, uh, graphite. And then what that does is it just creates some little modeled texture just to get this kind of ruined um, uh, effect like just to make them look a little older because like the Hearst Arts pieces they just have like perfect little clean uh, edges on them they look like perfect cut stone and I wanted something that looked much much older and uh, more ruined so like by, by sprinkling by covering the molds with um, the, the little bits of unmixed plaster, it just creates these interesting little voids in the, in the molds that um, just create this kind of cool looking effect when you, when you take them out of the molds. So I did that on the brick molds. I did that on the, um, on the, the uh, I made molds of my own of these things. Like I made, um, uh, like complete columns, you know, and uh, complete sections so that it would really speed up the, uh, the casting of like these pieces because I wanted to make a bunch of these. And then also I wanted to make um, a bunch of these. So I made molds that would just really speed up making pieces like this. Um, so, uh, but then something that I was really pleasantly surprised about with these, um, when I was making these, uh, these little wall sections, um, is that these, these brick pieces, 
um, the little courses of the bricks are actually, um, you can break them, like you can cut them, like I was using the scalpel to, uh, to cut them, and they're actually on, a, on an inch system. So what I mean by that is um, I can cut in between the courses of bricks and they're, uh, they're like, I can cut out chunks of brick in between the, cus the courses that are like inches, you know, like one inch tall and two inches thick or, you know, whatever. So, um, and then, um, but they also have the teeth in them so that you can make little like broken uh, wall sections. Like, uh, like this guy, I was playing with it, you know, like I had two complete casts of, of, of one, of the, one of these molds. And then I, um, I just wanted to make a little ruined wall section. So, uh, you know, I glued the pieces together and then put some like balsa wood on it and, uh, and then, you know, more plaster and then like sprinkled um, plaster on top of it to look like snow. I mean, you're looking at like 50 cents in, you know, materials. Like I painted it with really cheapo paints, like the craft store paints, like Hobby Lobby, um, you know, Walmart paints, like Apple Barrel or um, like the, the Hobby Lobby stuff, they regularly put it on sale for 40% off. So it's like 85 cents for a tube of their paint. And then the, um, the stuff at Walmart, like Apple Barrel, it seems like it's always on sale for 50 cents a tube. So, I mean, just like if I want to make a whole table of this stuff, I could do it on the super cheap, like the, or, you know, like if my, um, if my design changes, like, uh, like I decided, like originally I had this design where the, um, the the little uh, these these wall sections have little wings on them, so they can clip into the uh, the pillar sections, so that they'll stand up even when people are you know like being kind of like rough with them and wobbling all over the place. And um, but I decided that they didn't need that, and I kind of adjusted this the design so that I could have these little free sliding um, portcullis pieces. But I don't feel bad about it at all because like this costs nothing, you know, to make. Uh, it's just just my time. So, um, but the the thing that I love about these is that it's just gives me tons and tons of options of little like I could I I feel very much like a kid again playing with Legos where it's like I'm like oh I just need that one more little piece you know, to make this castle thing. And then, um, but, but I can just pour more, you know, when I, when I need them. So it just gives me tons and tons of options. Um, and, uh, so yeah, um, the, let's see. And then the only other thing is that, uh, the, the one hot tip that I was going to give you guys was, um, to, uh, I do I do mine when I'm doing laundry day. <laughs> um, I, I put the molds on top of the dryer and then make sure that it's level, that they're on something that's level. And then I have a little silicone mat that they sit on top of. And then when the dryer like agitates and shakes around, then it shakes the bubbles out of the mold. Um, that's the only other uh, like hot tip thing that I, that I have. So I think I'm gonna do one more video like talking about this um i'm gonna do uh, like a painting video so uh so yeah you know um thanks for watching and uh i'm glad that you guys are following along with this i've been having a lot of fun you know doing this stuff so uh yeah uh take care of yourselves and i will see you in the next one and we'll do some uh some painting all right See you guys.